Throughout the years of cinema, kaiju films have been a staple of Japanese filmmaking, long enough to the point it's had its Hollywood treatment. Okay, well, after an attempt. From the first Godzilla film to Gamera, Ultraman, and many other tokusatsu franchises, the kaiju genre has stood the test of time despite the flaws it had during its past. Kaiju films are one of the best genres cinema has to offer, not for its lack of consistent dialogue or story, to which not all films apply, but how these movies were made. The days before CGI took over the industry, how much detail went into the props shown on screen, and the techniques that are still being used today for modern films. This may be an underrated opinion, but I believe that the kaiju genre is a masterpiece of filmmaking. Just like with how franchises like Marvel, DC, Star Wars, and many others have their moments of enjoyment and value in entertainment, kaiju films have a charm for what the films stand for. The original 1954 Godzilla has its message of the dangers of nuclear weapons. Mothra vs. Godzilla shows that greediness leads to tragedy. Godzilla vs. Hedorah has its... message of pollution? Godzilla vs. Biollante, the dangers of biotechnology and playing God, man vs. nature, and its reckless actions that leads to more danger. Just like with any major film, the drama makes the audience hope for the protagonist to achieve its goals. We always root for our favorite characters facing any challenge during a film, something most Godzilla and kaiju movies achieve in. Another reason why kaiju films are a masterpiece is their special effects. Starting with Eji Tsuburaya, the father of Japanese special effects. We owe a lot of gratitude to this man as he's one of the main people responsible for creating many childhoods. His pride in his work is what led us to several classics such as the early Showa-era Godzilla films, Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidra, and of course, Ultraman. This man's work has inspired other special effects directors that have continued this legacy, Teriyoshi Nakano and Koichi Kawakita, to name a few. The process of suitmation, while having its limits in terms of expressions, really brings life and character of the monsters, well, depending on the film. If you really wanted to see the best of what Japanese special effects can do, I highly recommend watching the Heisei Gamera trilogy. Both the Heisei Gamera and Godzilla series really show what power these special effects can show. For example, Godzilla showing emotion. Spoiler alert, but in 1995's Godzilla vs. Destroyer, Godzilla Jr. dies. Being filled with agony and grief, Godzilla roars to mourn the loss of his only companion, just like with the main protagonist in any major blockbuster film. The monsters show emotion and feelings like any living creature. Two movies before, Godzilla showed a different side of himself where he first met his son. You now have this soft Godzilla that wants to be friendly. Keep in mind that this is the same Godzilla who most likely took hundreds of thousands if not millions of lives throughout the Heisei era. I highly recommend watching this video by Weird Girl Cindy, who took clips from Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla 2 and translates Godzilla's body language. The scene where he first met his son really shows how animals like Godzilla can be. Not just a monster with no conscience, but as a living creature that kills for its young, like we do. But if I had to choose, I honestly prefer the Heisei Gamma trilogy to the Godzilla series. This is where I talk about Gamera. Gamera started out similar to Godzilla back in 1965, being created by man's reckless actions via the use of nuclear weapons. His character changed throughout the 1960s and the 1970s which caused the demise of the series for both him and Godzilla. But after Toho killed off Godzilla in 95, Gamma made the ultimate comeback that shows why kaiju films are great. Gamma Guardian of the Universe shows the best of suitmation and visual effects. The sequels would get better with these tactics as more complicated monster designs would be brought to life, such as Legion and Iris. Gamma's trilogy is not superior just because of the effects alone, but because the story of Gamma being an ancient creature summoned to defend humanity against the Gauss, who was a threat to the human population, has more mystery to the story, especially when compared to the Heisei Godzilla series. Another thing, the majority of the characters have more meaning to the story when compared to the 90s era of Godzilla. For Godzilla, Miggy Sagusta doesn't really do much in the story until the last two films where her character actually develops for once. For Asagi Yanomoro, she has more of a deep connection to Gamera. She was with him during his battles and even shared the same pain as him. And up till the third movie, she still remains by his side. Of course, not to shit on the Godzilla series, they got some of the best titles in that franchise. I know that you might have a different view of the Heisei series and by all means comment down below on what makes them not better. It might be silly of me to go this deep into something as stupid as Godzilla, but hey, 
You got your Marvel fans, Star Wars fans, Jurassic Park fans, and you got Godzilla fans. Because at the end of the day, we're all still geeks. We all have our preferences. If you enjoyed this video, please slap the like button and comment down below. What are your thoughts on the kaiju genre? What do you agree or disagree with my views? And also be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying my best to be more active on YouTube and getting your support really means a lot to me. I'm Panda Amanda, signing out.